Hey, guys, how are you? Hello, John. So I want to start with the running game because last week it was anemic against the Colts. The offensive line looked to be dominated by the Colts' defensive line. Adrian Peterson couldn't even average two yards a carry. And this week, totally different, even though you had a starter come out of the lineup and you have Chase Rie, the center, move over to left guard. What was different? Why were they so successful running the football yesterday? Well, there's a, there are a couple of reasons. One, the Colts did a lot of stunting and or moving um, at the snap, whether it was you know stunts on third downs or pass rushes and all that, but or the way they would slant their line on some of the run plays. It seemed to uh, either confuse the Redskins linemen. They may they may shoot a gap where they weren't expecting it. You know, instead of going you know, to their one shoulder, they're on the other shoulder, and it seemed to surprise them. Led to a lot of negative runs. That wasn't happening yesterday. The Packers have a pretty good defensive line. They have some size, and so I think the size is what concerned them a little bit. Um, but they did a good job of staying with positive runs. So you, they were able to avoid the second and 10, second and 12s that they kept getting last week. But I think a lot of it was um, that style of play, um, I think, was more conducive to 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 success for them. And, you know, I had some people during the week were telling me, like, you know, the Colts line was a lot harder. It's, it's a line that they – it's a style they faced against Dallas a lot, and they haven't had great success against them. But whereas this group, the Packers, play a little bit more like what the Redskins do. So I think at least a couple people there felt like that familiarity blocking against this sort of scheme from working against this summer would help them. And kind of, you know, they knew where their landmarks were. They knew what their targets were, et cetera. So I think it adds up. And then, listen, they, they converted on third down, and they got more opportunities. I think that was a big thing, too. They also saw something in the, in the Packers secondary that they wanted to expose and attack early with that uh, down-the-field throw to Richardson. They had some pass interference calls on the first couple of drives, which certainly helped them. Um, was that something that they you know, were, was in the game plan for, for that particular yes. reason? Because Green Bay secondary, they didn't look, <laughs> I know they had a couple of young guys in there, John, but, man, they didn't look good to me. No, and going into the game, and I, remember, you know, I had talked to, about the receivers earlier in the week that – I felt that it was going to be a better opportunity for them. Not because Green Bay's corners were – I think their corners are actually pretty good. But the style of defense they play, it was going to be more – there are going to be more opportunities on the outside, more one-on-one coverage, cover three, whereas the Colts played that soft cover two almost the entire game. So that's going to take away some of those types of shots. So – it was, again, it was more, I think, more conducive to winning on the outside. And, again, it wasn't like the receivers had these great, great gains um, all day because a lot of it was tight ends over the middle, which I think was also part of that style, which they could not attack last week. Um, but it, it did, they did know or they did feel like there would be opportunities down the field um, because of that. And, um, so, and they took advantage. I mean, last week when they get – a couple of the, the man looks, they went down the field. Uh, they just didn't get them that often. So this week they knew they would get them, and they knew they were going to attack. And it's funny because even on the Paul Richardson touchdown, he said, you know, that was like, what, the fourth play of the game. But I knew Alex was going to go down the field. I said, well, ask him why. I said, because that was a point of emphasis all week. So they knew they were going to have chances to attack. You know, uh, defensively, they come up, uh, you know, with another strong performance, and here we are three games in. I don't know what they're averaging in terms of points allowed, but it's very few. Uh, I think they're way up there in in yardage in terms of, you know, fewest yardage uh, being uh, allowed uh, every week. Uh, What do we make of this defense? Now, they were fortunate. There were a lot of drops yesterday. They they were very fortunate. Yeah. There were a lot lot of key drops, and, you know, the fourth and two, the long one, I think it was like on a third and ten down mm-hmm. the sideline by the tight end. Right. There were, I think there were three or four of those types of plays. But what they did better, what they were able to do yesterday, and it's funny because the same in the first game, when they were able to rush four and cover seven, they forced Green Bay to kind of take their time driving downfield, and they took away a lot of big plays except for the heat, the long touchdown, of course. Other than that, they did a good job of forcing them to – um, take their time and, and keep everything underneath. Um, but they do, I think they do have some things to clean up. The run defense, I think, has to be better. And I think uh, sometimes it's um, a matter of getting to the right gaps or staying in the right gaps. And I also think there's sometimes, there are a couple times yesterday where they still had some of those um, 
I guess you just call them miscommunication on some of the pick routes or that sort of action. Um, one led to it. One was on a drop, one of the third down drops. Um, otherwise, um, you know, there was a you know, guy going to the wrong receiver um, and leaving a guy open. That's happened a few times in those types of um, coverage situations. That has to get cleaned up. But I think, you know, one thing Mason Foster felt was different was just, you know, we, you always hear when they win, there's always more energy. When they lose, there wasn't mm-hmm. enough. Um, and, again, the drops helped, but he felt like there was a, it just better with that all around. Um, and so, you know, it's, that's, a, that's a great quarterback they played, and to hold them to 17 is pretty good, and especially considering how much the Packers had the ball in the second half.